my way Stumble around all day I try to stand up straight But then I tumble down Hi and welcome to Talking with Giants. I'm your host Scott Schilling. Glad to have you with us for another great show. Now I like to start all these shows the exact same with my pre-event prayer. So let me start it out that way. Lord, allow the words that we share here today to positively impact 100% of the lives of the audience that are here today. Only you know who you sent here to hear this message. Allow me to do the best I can to deliver that message, be a vehicle and of service to you. That's all I can ever control is a high intention and a low attachment, a high intention of imparting something good to each and every one of you that's watching this, and a low attachment as the what that might be. Quite frankly, you're going to get a lot of nuggets out here. Got a great friend with me today. Uh, Michelle Prince uh, had her entire life change in 1989 when she first met her mentor, Zig Ziglar, one of mine as well. In 1994, her dream came true and she became a, uh, started her sales career for the Ziglar organization right out of college. Uh, with that foundation of personal growth, productivity, leadership, Michelle was able to achieve extraordinary results, numerous awards, making her an in-demand sales and marketing professional. Michelle decided to take that knowledge, start her own company, fulfill passion, her passion of motivating, inspiring, encouraging others to live phenomenal lives. Now, she does this through speaking, coaching, teaching, Be went full circle, became a Ziegler motivational speaker, re representing those values that the company still has today, igniting the passion, kickstarting the career that started many years ago when she was a young girl. <laughs> Michelle is more committed than ever than carrying out the legacy of Zig Ziglar going forward. Known as America's productivity coach, has also learned how to overcome procrastination, living a happier life, more abundant life, and a mom and a wife, mom to two sons. Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. It's great to see you again. It's so fun. You know, we were sitting here off camera or, or before the cameras rolled, and, you know, it's like we were talking just like we'd been here forever. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was so well, we fun. we have known each other a long time. So I know. It's so, <laughs> it's so cool. So let's, uh, let's get into it so it can provide them some value. Absolutely. We'll, we'll talk later. Um, you know, when you, what was it when you first met Zig that was set such an impression in your mind? Well, I was 18, and it was actually my graduation gift from college. So I was not happy about this graduation gift. So I, I kind of met Zig initially uh, not very excited <laughs> because I did not want to be at, his, at this event. But three days with Zig Ziglar learning about goal setting and, and personal development and all those things that you and I know are so, so important, um, it changed my life. And then to see this man of such integrity and character and humor, and I just I loved him. I mean, anyone who's ever met Zig Ziglar loves him. Uh, but what happened to me that weekend was I found my passion, and I, I was so moved by everything that I learned that weekend that I knew in that moment that I wanted to do what he was doing, not just do it, but with him someday. <laughs> and at the end of the seminar, that's exactly what I told him. I said, I'm going to work for you one day. You wait and see. And it was almost five years to the day that I started working there at the headquarters. That's pretty amazing. What fun to, uh, to have somebody set something in place yeah. that hard. So when you graduated college, then you did have the opportunity to work mm -hmm. the, for the man. I did. What was that like? Oh my goodness. It was, it was, it was amazing, just like you would imagine. I mean, it's, it's probably the most positive company you could ever work for. I mean, everybody there, their whole goal, just like what you're doing, Scott, I mean, the whole intention is to change people's lives. And so to be a part of that was life-changing. And I was just out of college, so I was very, very young. And but then also to just to see Mr. Ziegler behind the scenes and, and all the different people, the family, you know, was all involved in the company and to see, you know, the real man and, and how uh, congruent he was with what he already taught and who he was on stage, he was even better behind closed doors. And so it was just, it was, it was literally some of the best years of my life. And I learned so much, but it also, it just, be, it, it set the stage for who I am today. That's awesome. Big way. You know, the, the, uh, you know, you said the word congruent, yes. and uh, one of the quotes that I used from one of the mentors that I was around is, how you do anything is how you do everything. And while that wasn't Zig's quotes, and he certainly has very many, um, share a little bit about that congruency or, or the better man behind, uh, you know, that you kind of saw behind the stage. I'll give you an example. So we, I was in sales for Zig, and, and at the time there were probably about 80 people in the company, so it was a big company. 
and we were all in our cubicles. And I just remember him coming over to my cubicles, and he, he, I was dating my husband at the time, so he was just my boyfriend. And he would always come over and he'd say, you know, in his sweet little voice, you know, Michelle, is that boy treating you well? And, and I mean, just he was so involved in everybody's life. And another great example, and, and I, it just still warms my heart to think about it, every Christmas, Christmas morning, we'd get a phone call. Everybody in the company, the whole staff, would get a phone call from Zig just saying, you know, Merry Christmas, we're so grateful for you, we couldn't do what we do without you. From somebody in the warehouse to you know, sales like I was to an executive, he was just so loving and caring and sincere. And yes, he did that for a living, but... He didn't do it for a living, if you know what I mean. He right. did it to make a difference. He wanted to change people's lives. And, um, and to be a part of something like that, it's just contagious. And you, you see the lives being changed and uh, so congruent. I've never, still to this day, have met anyone so in sync with their God-given gifts and plan, you know, what they're here to do, but also the integrity to carry it out consistently. Yeah, he, he was a, such a great... Uh, role model yes. in in when I finally got the opportunity to meet him and work mm -hmm. with him it doesn't take long being around you around him far longer than I was but the you want to carry that legacy mm -hmm. forward you yes. he just he, he's one of the great ones yes and everything he did was biblically based he may not have said that but it's it was all based on just you know simple golden rule you know treat people the way you want to be treated and and it, it, I can't say enough about him. And the family, everyone else in the family is the same way. He just kind of carried the torch for all of us. And, and I see now the generation of us behind him, we want to carry that on too. You know, it's not just motivation. It's not just training. It's life-changing messages. Yeah, I think it's really more of the, um, let me give you a, a, a path that works. Yes. You can be a good person. Yes. You can treat people with respect and right. dignity. You can do all those nice things. And still be successful. And be successful. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah no, it's, it's awesome. I know that uh, a part of what I am very fortunate, you as well, have the opportunity to speak at what Zig used to call the most important meeting of the week, the Monday morning devotionals yes. at 7.30. Yes. <laughs> uh, that, that had to be amazing you know, it, when you were actually in the uh, facility. So when I, when I began working for Zig, I only had one job before that, and it was six months in corporate America. So really, working at Ziegler was my only experience, truly. And so every morning, 7.30 a.m., like you said, it wasn't mandatory, but it, it was optional. But everybody went. It was uh, devotions, and we'd have a different speaker giving their testimony and just sharing and praying to start the week off right. So when I left Ziegler and I went to other companies, I was so shocked. I'm like, oh, so other companies don't operate this way either? I mean, you can't even talk about God, let alone pray every morning or every week to, to start the week. So it was just, there was a prayer room mm -hmm. in the company headquarters. So anybody, no matter what you're going through at any given time during the day, you can go in there, close the door and pray. And it was encouraged. It was not forced in any way, but it was, I mean, what a great environment is that? F fabulous. <laughs> I thought everybody operated that way, yeah. and, and I learned the hard way. Well, That's it was funny. I was at a, uh, a lunch with Zig and Jean and Julie, mm -hmm. and I actually gave Julie a copy of Talking with Giants, my first yes. book. And Julie said, I'd be honored to read it. I look forward to that. And all of a sudden, she looked at me, and she said, son, I just want you to know, you don't know the material you need to know well enough for what God has planned for you. <gasps> <laughs> wow. And I said, wait, you, you don't even that. know me. I know. Yeah. Uh, are you sure? Goes, are you sure it's me? Yeah, yeah, no. She goes, no, uh, it's oh, you. Wow. And so it was in it. And uh, actually at a devotional a couple of weeks ago, uh, Julie was there. And I said, I just want to thank you so much oh. because you really put me on a path. Yep. Of, uh, she goes, you need to read the book. The manual's there. <laughs> I love that. But you know, but that's just, and I, that, that's the epitome of that family. They don't do it to do it as a business. They do it, literally, that's just the people that they are, and it just comes out, and they want to serve people and help people, and um, just a beautiful thing. It really is. What a, what a great foundation. Yes. So you, you took all that, and I know you're on a mission to really help people understand how to stop juggling schedules and procrastination, getting more business done in less time. All those, you know, gaining leadership. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite part of that, or is it just all 
kind of all fun. Well, I love what I do. I mean, I, I literally, every morning I wake up, and I'm like, I get to do this. You know? <laughs> Whether it's my own workshop or speaking or doing things like this, like I get to do what I feel so passionate about. But because I didn't get to do it for so many years, so what I lucked out was I did work for Zig, but then I left and I went into you know, the real corporate America. And it was very different. And it really, uh, goodness, I, I, I lost myself. I lost my passion. I lost my drive. I lost my, my vision for what I felt I was supposed to do in life. And so I had to go through all of these lessons of, for myself of figuring out, what is my passion? You know, what am I called to do? And so to answer your question, what is my favorite thing? I love helping people to figure out what's already in them. I mean, we all have something, a gift. Um, it's just part of who we are. We were born with that. And your gift is when you share that gift through telling your story, by telling others what you can help them with. That's when you make a difference in other people's lives. And that's what happened to me. So, you know, going through not knowing what I wanted to do, not knowing my passion, not really knowing, you know, how to serve other people, serve God, and then now being on the other side of it and just realizing, wow, all it is is just being real, sharing your story, finding what you're passionate about, doing what you know you were called to do, and then doing it, and then that's when things get really exciting. Yeah, the juxtaposition had to be um, almost jolting to, to leave a Ziegler-type oh organization to go into a, a normal mm -hmm. corporate. Is that where the faith came in? It's kind of <laughs> like you, you, find a, you kind of saw it over here and... So, you boy, know, I kind of need it over here. It's funny because I was in a different place. So when I began working for Zig, I was right out of college. I was very young. And when I left, I was still very young. It was in my early 20s. Um, wasn't even married yet. I mean, so I had this vision of climbing this corporate ladder. And, you know, I'll, I'll be really honest, uh, you know, dollar bills were <laughs> in my eyes because it was the dot-com boom. And I was recruited to go do software and all of these things that I thought would make me happy. And um, it was very jolting in that, it was exciting. Like I'm, I remember the day I had to make the decision: Do I stay with my passion, or do I go make more money? Passion, money, and of course, money won out at the time. I don't regret it because I wouldn't be sitting here today. And it, it really helped me to figure out: You know, the farther you are from your passion, there's just no way you can be happy. Deep, deep, deep down, happy. Yes, you can have things. Yes, you can have money. You can have success. But if you're not really doing something that lights you up. You're never ult you're not going to be at the, the level of joy you're really looking for. And so when I began really searching my heart of what do I love to do? You know, what is my passion? I, I work, I take care of kids, I do all these things, but I do my shoulds, but I'm not doing anything I love. And I just kept coming back to the feeling I had when I was 18. And when I, when I saw Zig and when I worked at the headquarters and the passion of motivating and inspiring and just encouraging other people to, you know, to find their greatness and step into it. Um, and that's what kind of propelled me to do my own business and do what I'm doing today. And I do. I pinch myself sometimes. I'm like, I literally, I get to do this. I'm so blessed. <laughs> well, that's what it, we were talking a little bit earlier, but I was, uh, my lovely wife Peggy is out in Las Vegas right now with her sister having some fun for a while during the summer. And, and um, I was thinking about that today. I woke up and I went, and I get to go do TV today. Yeah. This is, you and, know. And encourage it, people. And, and encourage and, people yes. and, and, and help people understand that you can live your dream. You can. I, I was so fortunate last weekend. I was um, uh, at the Public Speakers Association annual convention, and they awarded me with International Collaborator of the Year. Wow. It, it was awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up. But it, <laughs> but it, it just felt so good to have people recognize mm -hmm. that what you do actually is pretty much behind the scenes a lot of times, it right? Matters, it's though. it's about lifting them up. Yes. And really that's what this entire brand talking with giants mm -hmm. and everything that we're working to do is to to help people understand whatever's in your heart is achievable. Yes. It, it, it is. You just got to you got to have the mechanism. I know you do that so well with the books and everything you do obviously mm -hmm. you're your own books, but mm -hmm. your book-bound workshop. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. Uh, just, y you basically get people's stories to come out. Yes. And you know, it's funny. If you would have asked me 10 years ago if I would be helping people publish books, I, I would have laughed because it wasn't anything on my radar. But what I found was, through that journey of figuring out what do I really want to do, one of the things that happened was I wrote my first book. 
And when I wrote my first book, I had no intention of sharing it with anyone. It was just something I had to do for myself, for my kids. And what's funny, and I can share this now, I didn't then, I literally had a published book, held it in my hand, had Zig Ziglar write the foreword, and I didn't tell anyone, but probably five people, including you know, my parents, my, my husband and all. And it was, it, it's silly now that I say that out loud, because it's like, well, why would you hold that in? What were you embarrassed? I just felt like, well, no, I, I just want to get this out. I have no intention of making it about me. But what I found was, once somebody read that book, and once somebody heard my story, just the, 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 the crazy life that I have and how unperfect I am, how that encouraged other people, it just instantly kind of gave me that light bulb of like, well, wait a minute. If really, if my goal in life is to help people, then I'm really doing an injustice if I don't share this. So I went through the whole process and launched this book and became kind of obsessed with publishing and, and how do you get a book out and how do you launch a book? How do you be, make a book a bestseller and all of these things? And through that process, I learned so much that I share that with other people. But I tell, at my book bound, I say it 100 times. It's not about the book. It's about your story. Because when you open up all the things that, that you stand for, when you share who you really are, what have you been through, good or bad, that could possibly help someone else, and you put it in a form that can, more people can digest, can read, can, can hold on to, that's when you make a bigger difference. And that's how you build this platform. And so I, I didn't intend for this to happen. And it's truly, I believe, a God thing. But it is all about your story. And more about finding the courage to believe that what you have to say matters, because every story matters. I, I think that's an, a great point, mm -hmm. because if we truly believe mm -hmm. that all things work for our good, yes, for those who are called to his purpose and believe, all this, everything, mm -hmm. is for your, it's divine. It is. It, it's divine at a time we may not understand. It's, <laughs> it's usually never <laughs> more, at the time we understand. But. <laughs> more than likely. But, but, we, uh, but we, we get these experiences. They're typically very costly. Uh, experience is a great teacher. It's just a very expensive one. Yes. So use somebody else's, <laughs> right? But I have found the same thing. I, I worked so hard in my early speaking career to be the perfect speaker, to not miss a word, to right. not do that. And at one point, somebody said, you know what? You're really kind of plastic. Mm. Oh, wow. And, and I said, what? That's what do you mean? I said, I'm just being accurate. I'm right. being right. proficient at my craft. And they said, you don't ever mess up. You don't ever do this. You don't, you're not real. Wow. And so there was a, so all of a sudden, I really had to take a look at it. And I looked at one of my friends who tactically was not uh, maybe the best speaker. Man, he connected yes. with audiences that like crazy. Key. Yes. And I saw what he did, mm -hmm. and I learned it. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, when you add that vulnerability to it, yep. when it's your story, <laughs> when yes. when you you said it, yes. uh, I'm certainly not perfect. Well, I'm not perfect. No. You know, I, but none of us are. But that's the key, I think, because nobody want nobody can relate to somebody who's perfect. So we want to hear, like, you know what? Wow, you've been through some things. You've struggled, and yet you have all of this, and you get. It, 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 it encourages people and gives them hope. And I think that's one of the reasons why Zig Ziglar was so beloved, is he didn't share stories. Yes, you knew he was successful, and yes, he talked a little bit about it, but really he talked about what he overcame. Right. You know, he came from a poor family in, you know, in Alabama, and he, he, he didn't have things. He lost his father in early age. And so all these things make him relatable. Like, wow, if he could go through that and, get, and overcome it and have this, then maybe I can too. And, that's one of the things that I think is so crucial in our world today, especially, is authenticity. And it is scary. And I'll be honest, and it does take courage, and I was not authentic for a long time because I was trying so hard to be perfect. But I think the more open you are and just say, like, look, this is who I am. I'm not changing. This is who God created me to be. But this is my heart, and this is how I want to help people. And I'm not going to be perfect. But if I can do something or say something to encourage you to do the same, I mean, if, if enough people do that, that's... That's how we make a huge difference. Well, that was the, the original genesis of Talking With Giants. The mm -hmm. first book was hearing Cynthia Kersey make this impassioned plea to support Habitat for Humanity, and I couldn't write her a check. Oh, wow. But I could do something. I could use them with talents, capabilities, the connections mm -hmm. I had, the yep. people I knew. I could do interviews. There are 21 charities tied to the book, still wow. available. You can go pick it up because yep. we still support 21 charities with it. Yep. But the the... <laughs> 
whole design around it was understanding that generosity builds prosperity, uh, not the other way around. We yes. don't prosper and give, yeah. we give then prosper. We don't give to prosper, yeah. but the natural byproduct of giving is prospering. Yeah. It's faith. Yeah, well, it's that's... giving without knowing you're going to receive. You know, it's kind of, it's just the way... It, isn't it interesting how so many things circle back to that definition? Mm -hmm. And I talk about it a lot in my trainings. Actually, it's a definition that carries two words. Mm -hmm. It's belief in the unseen, assurance of the unknown, mm -hmm. is the definition for both fear and faith. and faith. Yep. One is believing in the positive, one is believing in the negative. Let's yes. choose to believe in the positive. Faith is belief in the unseen, assurance of the unknown. Oh. We wouldn't be doing this show Absolutely. if we didn't have faith. <laughs> no. Right? Because it's, just, it's so funny you bring that up today because just this morning I was reading Exodus and it was about the, the manna, you know, for everyone in the desert. And, the, and, and, and the, the, the rule was you can only take enough for that day. You can't save any. And, of course, they're starving and worried that, oh, my gosh, you know, what if I don't have enough tomorrow? And, 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 and the whole point being like you, the fear is what's going to make us hold on and not step into our greatness and not do what we feel we should do. It's the faith, though, that you just have to trust that it's all part of the perfect plan. And it's not going to be easy all the time. But I don't know. The more, the more faith you have, the more fun life gets, too, though, in a way. I agree. If you think about it. Because then it's like, well, you never know what's going to happen. And either way, it's going to be fine. <laughs> I was saying it to, to Pam and Lee when I came into the station here uh, before we shot here. Um, I said, this is such a faith walk mm -hmm. to have this show and to go out. The difference was coming in here and meeting them and mm -hmm. seeing the opportunity and understanding that if all we ever help is one more person, yes. we've done well. I remember I was uh, at a uh, Life Today taping with James and Betty Robeson uh -huh. and Nick Vucicic oh, was wow. the guest. Oh, wow. And Nick said that day, he said, all I want to know is when I get to heaven, did I do good? Did, did I bring everybody I should? Mm -hmm. yep. And I don't know how many that means, mm -hmm. but if it's just one more, that's okay. Mm -hmm. exactly. and, it, it, and it really it sets something. You, yeah. yeah, it did. It's yeah. just like, you need to I talk know. for a second. I'm, I know. <laughs> I'm a little well, verklempt. Yeah, it's okay, though. <laughs> but it just shows, again, authenticity. It shows who you really are. And I think that's, that draws people in, is being real. You know, somebody watching this right now is going to be able to relate like wow that's you know how I feel too but I haven't had the courage to say it or I haven't had the courage just to, to follow through maybe somebody has an idea like talking with giants that, that could change the world but they're yeah but what ifs and so your authenticity is going to inspire people well thank you I appreciate and all of ours not just you well you know? I, yeah I appreciate that the 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 point is we've all been giving given such amazing potential mm -hmm. God has granted us such great gifts and how much has gone to the cemetery yeah. how much has been left that hasn't been exposed and that's why I, I really appreciate what you do with bookbound and your books and your encouragement your talks because you really you elicit it mm -hmm. you know we've been friends for a long time now mm -hmm. and I don't even know how we became friends really but it's, you know, it <laughs> you know, we just met. But, but I, it doesn't really matter, right? Yeah, it doesn't right? matter, yeah. Isn't that we the fun? We just introduced fun? each other. Well, that's just it. Yeah. I mean, sometimes in the speaking industry, in the training industry, it's like, oh, no, you know, you, you might be after my people. Mm. <laughs> They're God's people. I mean, I'm just a, I'm a gnat in this whole thing, right? <laughs> you know, so. There's enough to go around. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's plenty, plenty for all of us. Yeah. So, gosh. Our time goes so fast. I know. Well, I'm just looking. I'm like, I want to ask one stellar question. Okay. Here. So what's the, if, if there was one big takeaway mm -hmm. from either your time with Zig or being around the Ziegler family or being in the industry or mm -hmm. just being a child of God? Mm -hmm. I know that's pretty now broad. Now you're going to make but, me verklempt. Um, you know, of course, my, 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 my starting point with, personal development was with SIG. And so I have to start with that, the, the integrity piece. I, my mom and I have, one, I have wonderful parents. And they always said, just do the right thing, do the right thing. And then to be a part of a company that was so successful and a man that was 
you know, in such demand and very, very successful in my eyes. And, you know, monetarily, personally, all these things, he was so successful. And that being the number one rule he had, which was to always do the right thing, always do the right thing behind closed doors in front of people, whatever. So that really, I would say, is one of the most important things. And I have had to learn this the hard way. I am so not perfect. I'm so far from it. But knowing that do the right thing as best you can, but know, too, that you will mess up and that God is there not to condemn you for messing up. In fact, the more mistakes you make, the closer God's going to try to reach out to you. And so for me, it's just knowing doing my best every day does not mean perfection. And, and I think a lot of people think, well, if I'm not perfect, you know, I'm not going to be loved. Well, no, God loves you no matter what. I mean, he created you. Why would he create some? Why would, you know, anyone who's a parent knows your kid can make the biggest mistakes. And I have two teenage boys, so I know that. Um, no, just perfect kidding. teenagers. They're perfect. But they, no matter what mistake they make, I love them so much. And the yeah. bigger the mistake they make, the more I just want to help them. Well, and that's how God is. What's such an interesting part of that, I mean, what I got intuitively as you were saying that, is it's all the humans that don't forgive us. Mm -hmm. but, but we hang ourselves on their stuff. Oh, my gosh. But God forgives us all the time. Yes. Uh, certainly not perfect by any stretch. No, either, and it's such you know? a, it's a hard thing, and I know this really well. People pleasing, we are out to please someone. And as soon as you can realize, well, who really cares that much? <laughs> you know, like get over it. Do what's right for you, what's right for your family. Do what's right, what God's calling you to do. And don't, who cares what other people think? I used to. I don't anymore. Man, that's a great way to wrap this show up. Mm -hmm. You know, the one thing that we learn as we go on is that all we can do is the best that we can possibly do. God's given us talents and capabilities and, and desires. And you're, people talk about living in their comfort zone. I think, quite frankly, so many people are in their discomfort zone right now. They've become comfortably being, discom being uncomfortable. It's crazy. You know, you got to get outside of it. You got to make it happen. That's why we have great guests like Michelle. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Join us next Saturday. We'll be back once again talking with Giants. Hi, Scott Schilling here. A number of years ago, I met Guinness Book of World Records holder, world's fastest reader, Howard Burr. His ability to manage knowledge impressed me. With the amount of information available today and the pace with which it's coming at us, having the ability to read and remember that information is more critical every day. Howard told me that using his techniques, I could double my reading speed in just a few short hours. Initially, I wasn't sure, but if in fact Howard was right, it'd be the best $100 in a couple hours I ever spent. Then Howard made an irresistible offer. Learn it first. Double your reading speed in just a few hours, or you owe me nothing. Now, how can you go wrong? The results have been amazing. I asked Howard if he would pass along that same opportunity to our TWG audience. Emphatically, Howard said yes. To learn more, simply go to TWGSpeedReading.com. Watch a short introductory video, sign up for the webinar that best fits your schedule, and double your reading speed in just a few hours, or you pay nothing. Now that's a deal worth looking into. TWGSpeedReading.com.